we are going to discuss the topic synthesis of DNA oligonucleotides. DNA neither cares nor knows. DNA just is and we dance to its music. It's a code by Richard Dawkins from his book River Out of Eden, A Darwinian Life. For the synthesis of DNA oligonucleotides, first we have to understand what oligonucleotides are. Oligonucleotides are short DNA or RNA molecules which are also known as oligomers that have a wide range of applications in genetic testing, research and forensics. Here we can see two structures, one is of a nucleotide and one is of a nucleoside. In nucleotide you can see that there is a phosphate group present and in a nucleoside there is no phosphate group present. Now we are going to learn about how solid phase oligonucleotide synthesis takes place. For that we have to learn about the basic structure of phosphorematide monomers. Over here in the structure you can see that the black part is the nucleotide and it is being protected by four different protection groups. The red one is DNP, the green one is diisopropyl uh, amino and the purple one is 2 cyanoethyl and the blue one is benzoyl. Phosphorematide monomers or phosphorematides, they are normal DNA nucleotides, adenine, cytosine, thymine, guanine, that are chemically modified with protection groups. And we need protection groups to prevent reactive amine, hydroxyl, and phosphate groups of the nucleotides from undergoing unwanted side reactions. Here you can see four different structures of phosphorematide nucleotides. The first one is of an adenosine, the second one is of a, a cytosine and the third one is of guanine and the fourth one is of thymine. Here you can see that the phosphorematide group, this is a phosphorematide group, it is being attached to the uh, support group with the help of a linker group. Now this support group can be of two types, polystyrene or PPG. PPG is controlled pore glass for uh, controlled pore uh, pore glass. The phosphorematide oligonucleotide synthesis cycle. Here it is the synthesis cycle starting from deacetylation, coupling, oxidation, capping. The first step is deacetylation of the supporting bound free nucleoside deblocking. This procedure is known as deblocking, in which the DNP is now going to be removed. We have to de-block it by the addition of trichloroacetic acid. And once the trichloroacetic acid will be added, the DNP group is going to uh, be removed. And here you can see that this solid support is attached to a linker, and the linker is attached to the uh, base with a free OH group here. Coupling step. Now the previous, you can see that the previous from the previous reaction, the nucleotide here is going to get attached to the incoming phosphorematide monomer. This monomer in the presence of the solvent acetonitrile is activated by acidic catalyst EPC. This is the catalyst which is going to activate this reaction and a phosphor uh, triester is going to be formed and this phosphor triester is going to be protected by a cyanoethyl group here. Oxidation reaction. Oxidation reaction here as you can see that the phosphodiester with the, which has been uh, the phosphodiester here which has been formed in the previous reaction is quite unstable and uh, therefore we have to make it more stable by the addition of iodine, water and pyridine. Now uh, the product is a phosphodiester which is a much more stable one and again it is still being protected by the cyanoethyl. Capping. Capping is the last step. It is the step at which we cap the last nucleotide and this is carried out in the presence of acetic anhydride and N-methyl imidazole. Now this both of them, they form an intermediate um, group and 
uh, intermediate uh, group and they are changing structure and at the end this one is going to stay the acylated part is going to stay with the side end with the five hydroxyl uh, end and this is known as rapid cleavage cleavage is basically the procedure in which you have to remove the linker and the solid support here we are going to remove the linker and the solid support with the help of ester hydrolysis in the presence of uh, aqueous ammonia and uh, this support uh, and linker is going to be removed here you can see that there is no linker or support group available now we have to carry once the linker and the support group is being removed we have to move on to the deprotection step and this deprotection step is basically the removal of the protection group which are with the uh, different phosphoramides and uh, it is going to be removed in the presence of ammonia and heat and here you can see that the protection group have been removed they are gone now the last protection group that which is a cyanothyride group has to be removed and this is going to be uh, done by beta elimination step and uh, via that step the cyanothyride group is going to be removed here you can see it is being removed it is gone now and now this phosphor uh, phosphor diester has been formed and it is there and it is going to be the part of a backbone of the oligonucleotide. Here you can see the yield. Now the yield depends upon the coupling effect of the uh, phosphoramidase and the yield by length can be determined by coupling uh, efficiency. Here you can see the two formulas which can be applied where Y is the yield. P is the coupling efficiency and N is the oligonucleotide length. Even at 99.5% coupling efficiency, practical synthesis length limits are typically 120 basis to achieve a 50% yield. So, to achieve a 50% uh, yield means that they are going to be 120 basis. Where in synth chemical synthesis of GNA oligonucleotide. Thank you.